Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't originally named Tyrannosaurus Rex, and in this video, we're going to break down a little of the history of T-Rex's discovery, why and how he was named what he was named, and then we're going to give a sneak peek of our next video, so stick around for that. The history of the discovery and naming of T-Rex is surprisingly complicated. The very first T-Rex fossil that we know about from recorded history appeared in an article in a Colorado newspaper from 1874. The paper described the fossil as a saurian tooth, four and one-fourth inches long, carved and serrated on one edge. And other than the fact that it looked a little like an alligator tooth, that was all that was known about any T-Rex fossils, up until 1890 when the first bones of a T-Rex were discovered, though the original tooth wasn't connected to those bones by early paleontologists. The bones were described by infamous paleontologist Othniel Charles Marsh, not as a T-Rex, but as a completely different genus of dinosaur that he had already identified earlier, called Ornithomimus. He even gave the bones a new species name, Ornithomimus grandis, which means the big bird mimic. This was technically T-Rex's first scientific classification. However, the next discovery of T-Rex bones were the first T-Rex fossils given their own original scientific classification, meaning that they weren't assigned to a pre-existing genus of dinosaur. In 1892, Marsh's equally infamous rival, Edward Drinker Cope, found two vertebrae that he gave the name Manospondylus gigas, which means large porous vertebrae. Incredibly creative name, Cope. Only one of those two vertebrae fossils has survived to today, but these bones were the first T-Rex fossils correctly identified as belonging to a brand new genus of dinosaur. Though, apparently, Cope actually thought that they were from a new type of ceratopsid dinosaur, and not from a meat-eater. About ten years later, two more skeletons that were slightly more complete than the Manospondylus gigas specimens had been dug up by a man named Barnum Brown. In 1905, those skeletons were described by another scientist named Henry Fairfield Osborne. He gave one of the skeletons the name Tyrannosaurus rex, meaning Tyrant Lizard King, and the other he named Dynamosaurus imperiosus. This is where the name Tyrannosaurus rex finally appears in our story, but it's not where the story ends by any means. So far, T-Rex has now been given four different names. So, how did it end up officially being called Tyrannosaurus rex? Generally speaking, when a new dinosaur is found that's distinct enough from every other type of dinosaur, it's given its own scientific name. But let's say you don't have the entire skeleton of a dinosaur, and you're trying to compare it to other types of dinosaurs, so you can either officially name it, or assign it to a dinosaur that's already been named. For example, pretend you're an early paleontologist, and all you have is this dinosaur's leg. You're trying to match it to one of the only three dinosaurs that have ever been discovered in your hypothetical world. But as you compare it to their legs, it doesn't match any of them. Especially since not all of those dinosaurs were even found with their legs. Since it doesn't match any of them, you give it its own scientific name, Legolosaurus elphi. But then you all of a sudden dig up another Stegosaurus fossil that matches with your leg bone. Since Stegosaurus was named before your Legolosaurus, Legolosaurus's name would revert back to the original name, Stegosaurus. Generally speaking, this is what happens to dinosaurs when they're accidentally renamed. The new name is dissolved, and the old name is given to the new bones. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, that's not what happened to T-Rex. Henry Osborne, the guy that named T-Rex T-Rex, recognized the similarities between his fossils and the Manospondylus gigas fossils found by Cope, but he decided not to officially combine the specimens. His Dynamosaurus skeleton, however, was combined with T-Rex, so now we're down to just three names for T-Rex. But like we showed in our example earlier, the name T-Rex should have also reverted back to an older name. But this is where things get really wild, so strap on your seatbelts. Ornithomimus was an incorrect designation for T-Rex entirely, since Ornithomimus is simply the wrong genus for T-Rex. So we could just revert the name for T-Rex back to the oldest valid name, Manospondylus gigas, T-Rex would forever be known as the large porous vertebrae. But going back to the very first name again, Ornithomimus might have been invalid, but its species name, Grandis, would have been fine to use. So instead of calling T-Rex Manospondylus gigas, we would call it Manospondylus grandis. According to the general naming standards for dinosaurs, T-Rex should have been called Manospondylus grandis. So why isn't it called that? Because Osborne never combined his fossils with Manospondylus gigas, the name T-Rex just caught on. For around a hundred years, people used the name Tyrannosaurus rex in publications, news articles, movies, books, etc. 
and the original names were all but forgotten. By the time people would have tried changing T-Rex's name back to an older name, everyone was just too familiar with the name T-Rex. The organization in charge of assigning dinosaurs their scientific names, ICZN, decided to make the name T-Rex a nomen protectum, a protected name to avoid confusion. This means that even though it technically should have reverted back to an older name, Tyrannosaurus Rex is now locked in as T-Rex's official name. And thank goodness for that, or we would have all been stuck calling T-Rex Manospondylus Grandis. All that said, I do want to know what you guys think about Osborne's other name for T-Rex, Dynamosaurus Imperiosus. Do you think it's a cooler name than T-Rex? Let me know in the comments section. So that's the story about how Tyrannosaurus Rex became named Tyrannosaurus Rex. But did you know that two of the scientists that we talked about in this video, Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, were involved in one of the most intense paleontology rivalries in all of history? People generally refer to their rivalry as the Bone Wars, and our next video is going to cover that in depth. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and comment below what your favorite name of all of the names is for T-Rex. And we'll see you guys next time.